Welcome back everybody to the University of Idaho and University of Wyoming Extension Sheep and Goat webinar series, uh, which we do once a week on Thursdays. Um, you have three hosts for this webinar, myself, Melinda Ellison, the University of Idaho Extension Sheep Specialist. You also have Carmen Wilmore, who is um, a University of Idaho Extension Educator in Lincoln County. And you have Whit Stewart, who is the University of Wyoming Extension Sheep Specialist. Um, make sure that you're following us on Facebook uh, for any updates, information, or um, opportunities for other events. Um, UI Sheep and Goats or UW Sheep are the Facebook handles for that. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the University of Idaho Extension Livestock channel, where we post all of the webinars after they're completed live. And this week, we have the pleasure of having Ashley Westerhold, who's the University of Idaho um, area economist, and she's gonna be visiting about some of the business aspects of sheep and goat um, operations as well as some tools that you guys can use. So Ashley, if you wanna go ahead and get started, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Melinda. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone. I don't know if um, one of these pictures actually is from your operation. I got them both off the internet. Uh, the sheep was from the Idaho Statesman and the goat is from DHIA. Um, so. If those are yours, please let us know in the comments section. Um, these are beautiful pictures. But today I really want to talk about enterprise budgets for sheep and goat farm management. Um, there's many topics that we can discuss in farm management, but enterprise budgets are some of the best tools that uh, farmers and ranchers can use for their operations especially to find out that break-even price. Um, and so we'll go into that today. But I just, yeah, I wanted to talk about enterprise budgets over all of the other topics we could potentially talk about in the future, but okay. And so we do a farm management class each winter and they're in many different locations. And we try to give words of wisdom to our farm management class participants. So we have a lot of beginning farmers and ranchers that are doing it for an FSA borrower training credit. Um, so we like to give them some words of wisdom. So first, it's best to separate farm and family financials. I know that sounds very difficult, especially if you are a small business and you are running um, your operation within your family living withdrawals and other things, but it is best to separate them you should create a business entity. There are many reasons to do so, but the largest one is liability reasons. And so if you're interested in that topic, please uh, let us know and maybe we can do something on business entities later. Um, if you are not paying yourself, you are participating as a hobby and not as a business. I think that is so hard for farmers and ranchers. You do what you love, and it is hard, um, hard work, and it doesn't have a lot of pay necessarily, but you need to start looking at paying yourself if you, you want to run it as a business. Um, to expand your business, you need to be increasing your gross margin, and today we will be talking about gross margin, um, so I will elaborate on that. And then start thinking of profits as the benchmark and not yield. So you don't necessarily want uh, the goat that milks or gives you the most amount of milk, uh, but you want the most profitable one. And so what does that look like? Well, let's go into what enterprise budgets are and what today's objectives are. But I think these are great ideas that everyone should keep in mind when they're working in a farmer ranch. So today's objectives, we're gonna review enterprise budgeting. We're gonna estimate production costs, calculate break-even prices and yields, yields, and then we'll look at the examples that are actually online available to you on the Idaho Ag Biz website. So what is an enterprise? An enterprise is an individual type of crop or livestock. So this could be meat, goats, dairy goats, sheep, alfalfa, corn, et cetera. It is one enterprise. 
Um, and it's a production plan. A production plan may include several enterprises. So maybe you don't only have goats. Maybe you have beef cattle. Maybe you, you are growing your own forage um, for all of your livestock. Well, those are all each individually different enterprises, but they could be a part of a production plan. So then what is a budget? Well, you're testing it out on paper. You're, you're estimating your profitability and your flexibility. So I hope that everyone has made a budget um, in their life. Um, maybe it's a home budget or um, I don't know, a college budget or something, but you have made a budget before most likely. But you need to make budgets for your farm and ranch and that is just so, so needed in a good business model. So why use enterprise budgets? Well, it can estimate your cost, returns and profits. And it can be on a per acre, per head, per pound of milk, um, basis. It can be as specific as you'd like it to be. It can identify more profitable enterprises. Maybe you're losing a lot of money on one enterprise. Could you switch that land or switch it into a different enterprise? And then it gives you building blocks of the whole farm plan, which we will not necessarily get into a whole farm plan today, but um, you need an enterprise budget to come up with a whole farm plan so you can compare enterprises. So when you're estimating revenues, because revenue is a huge part of enterprise budgets, you are looking at cash and non-cash revenue. Then you're looking at projected yields. So what have you done in the past? What were your yields in the past? What are the yield trends in maybe the Magic Valley where I am living? located and what are the amounts of inputs used for those yields and then what are projected selling prices what have you gotten in the past for your milk for your wool what have you gotten in the past what do the prices look like in the future and uh, what have the price trends been so if has it been an upward trend has it been a downward trend and these can help you predict what kind of prices you're going to get this year um, to put in an enterprise budget so on the other side we have revenues and then we have costs that we also need to estimate and so these are just as important because a lot of people don't even realize a lot of the costs that they have on the farm so your operating costs, it's from the actual operation of the enterprise. So that includes the variable costs and the direct costs. Then you have ownership costs, and that's the costs that are associated from owning the assets. So the fixed cost and the indirect cost. And then you can prorate them to individual enterprises, which we can get into um, later. And then opportunity costs are non-cash costs. So it's difficult to estimate because you're saying that if you weren't using this land um, for grazing for your sheep, what could you be using it for? And so it's really hard to estimate that. You can't necessarily take your land and put it straight into malt barley, um, but you can think about that. So land and management, and then your returns to risk in management. So is there something that could be less risky um, than farming and ranching? Which I think the, we all know the answer is yes, but we love what we do, therefore we're going to keep doing it. So what falls under op operating costs, which I think a lot of us know already, but um, there's a lot of things that fall under operating costs, which include feed, pasture, uh, salt mineral, vet medicine, trucking, commission, checkoff or brand ex inspection, labor, building improvements, uh, vehicles, seed, fertilizer, chemicals, pesticide, irrigation, machinery, field labor, um, and others that in could include assessments, uh, crops and and insurance and then operating interest. And so again, we're going to look at these examples of where they are inside the enterprise budgets 
that the University of Idaho has already created that I think will be a useful tool. So ownership costs, which would include tractors and equipment insurance, tractors and equipment depreciation and interest, land, which would include the irrigation system if there is one, uh, breeding livestock, building and improvements, machinery, equipment, vehicles, overhead, and management fees. And so those are in the ownership costs. And so when you think of this, you could maybe spread those ownership costs over different enterprises. And again, we can show that uh, when we're looking at an enterprise budget. Um, but it not, doesn't have to necessarily all fall into one enterprise. So we really want to calculate the cost of production. So every year, you guys should be completing a Schedule F um, for the IRS. And so what you can do is use that Schedule F to know what your costs were, um, to really look at your revenues and your costs um, that are associated. And then what you can do is use our University of Idaho budgets as a benchmark or just as a tool for you to input your own data into. And again, this, this can come out of per cow cost, per acre cost, uh, per pound of milk cost. Um, and then you can help determine your break even prices, which is just such a huge, huge asset to have. Because if you know your break even price, you are going to be so much more comfortable selling at a certain price, um, just to make sure you are making enough money to sustain the business. Oh, and I wanted to show you that if you ever do need tax help, there's actually uh, ruraltax.org, and it helps you with a lot of tax documents. Um, so if you're ever interested, I definitely would check out ruraltax.org, and it's a really good website. So how do we decide what we should produce? Well, what is our maximizing gross margin? What gross margin has the most potential? And so we need to take our yield estimates and our price estimates, and that will get us our gross margin. And together, you can see that you take gross revenue, which is the price and the yield, so gross revenue. And so this is uh, feed barley, malt barley, hard red spring wheat, uh, soft white spring, and then soft white winter. And as you can see, we have the gross revenues. I know this is a livestock channel, uh, but it is very easy to compare against cropping systems. But uh, gross revenue, you can see here, we have all the gross revenues, and then we have the operating costs. And so what does it take to produce feed barley? Um, and then when you take gross revenue minus operating costs, you get this gross margin. So, what is the largest gross margin? Well, actually, it is soft white winter wheat has the largest gross margin. And so that is actually money above your operating cost. So what you're making above your operating cost. And you can use that money to then put it towards your fixed assets or your owner um, operating costs, your owner costs. And that is great because then you can actually pay yourself. Um, we never want to see a gross margin that's negative. And I know it's so hard to say that, um, especially with how the markets have been. But gross margin should really be positive so that you can actually use this money to pay down maybe outstanding debt for equipment um, or land. And so just really look into that gross margin. And again, we'll look at the example to show you where that is in an enterprise budget. So determine break even price. The break even price is the price needed to cover cost at a given production level. So the break even price is total cost divided by expected yield. Well, and then we have break even yield. So how much yield would I need to break even? And so the yield needed to cover costs at a given price. 
break-even yield equals total cost divided by expected price. So together, we'll look at that onto our Idaho AgBiz website. And so there are decision tools, and again, I'm about to pull them up for you. Um, there's PDF versions, which give you all of our assumptions and discussions. And then there's the Excel enterprise budgets and Excel templates, which I think are very user friendly. And I just wanted to walk through a couple of them with you today. And I just wanted to show you how to get on the website as well and where to find them, um, because I think they are so useful. Um, and so, I also wanted to just put in a plug. If you are interested, we have farm management classes again in the winter, which we expand on all of these topics range. I mean, it's all farm financial management and it actually allows you to earn an FSA beginning farmer and rancher borrower training educational credit. Um, so if you're interested, please let me know. Um, you can email me. My email should be in, uh, the description box if you're watching this on YouTube or Melinda will be able to get you hooked up to me. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my PowerPoint and start sharing um, how to get onto the AgBiz website. And so I will show you. So if you type in Idaho AgBiz, so let's just say we're in Google and you go Idaho ag biz so the first one that pops up is uidaho.edu so you know you're at the right place and now you are on idaho ag biz website and so within idaho ag biz you can see that we have crop budgets crop markets livestock budgets livestock markets educational resources which include commodity marketing farm management succession planning and then other management tools, and then people that are involved in farm management, a newsletter sign up, and then publications. So today, since we are talking about um, livestock and sheep and goats, uh, let's go into livestock budgets. And as you can see in these livestock budgets, we have it broken out by cow-calf, dairy, feedlot, replacement heifer, sheep and goat budgets and so i wanted to show you guys what's inside the sheep and goat budget and so we actually have sheep budgets where you can get the excel that i was talking about or the pdfs again that show you the assumptions that we've made inside our excel forms um, and then you have use on pasture lambs on dry lot 100 head uh, pdf and excel and so these are a little bit older, um, but you can replace all the numbers. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we also have a dairy goat budget, which actually Carmen Wilmore, um, one of the hosts, helped um, my counterpart, Ben Eborn, create. And it's from 2018. And so there is the Excel form and the PDF along with that one. And so I really wanted to show you how to go through those and how to enter your own information. And so we can start with the sheet budget. And so if you just click Excel, um, you can follow along at home with me if you're interested, if you wanted to go onto the Idaho AgBiz website and click Excel. So I'm going to stop sharing again and then share my Excel form uh, where it's the sheet budgets. And so I hope you are all able to see my Excel now, um, where you come to three different um, tabs. And so the first tab is, I think, very important. So it's input prices. And I hope all of you are keeping track of what you are paying for your inputs. So how much did you pay per ton for alfalfa hay this year? How much did you pay for feed barley? How much should you pay for corn, et cetera? Um, as you can see, there's feed, and then there's marketing, and then there's labor, and there's interest. And so you are able to ch change all of these numbers. Um, and feel free to do so to reflect what you're, you're actually paying. If our budgets online show that you're making negative $100 uh, per uh, head, then 
you say that cannot be right. Well, we're using numbers of averages and I hope that you are getting better numbers than we are. And I hope you are making better decisions and maybe negotiating better prices. And so I would love to hear from you um, about that if you are interested in saying like your numbers are way wrong. And also this is from 2014. And I would also love to work with you guys on creating a 2020 budget that might reflect the sheep industry today. So with that, the next input prices, and now we go into sheep. And these are sheep on range. It's a thousand head with lambing on range, lamb sold as feeders. So we have our gross receipts or gross revenues. So how much did each feeder lamb weigh? So we have 105 pounds, we have a number of head, and the total price or cost per unit. So what did we get paid for our feeder lambs per unit? and then our total value. And so this cost is a per pound cost, and then you create a total value, and then a value per head, okay? And so you continue to do that with all things you sell. So your culling needs to be on gross revenues. So that is a revenue. Um, so please include that in your budgets, and please just use this as a template. I think it's uh, a very great template even if it is from 2014, all these numbers can be changed to reflect your operation. And so operating costs, again, how much hay did you have to buy this year? How much did it cost you? Um, again, all the feed stuffs, um, and then we have salt minerals. How much did you pay per AUM in federal range? How about pasture? Did you have private pasture? Did you have to haul? Did you market? Did you shear? Um, what was your assessment? And so you can see that we have a total revenue of $249.04 per head of gross revenues. And we're saying that our total operating cost is only $165.88 per head. And so what we can see is that our gross margin, so our income above operating costs, is $83.16. Well, now we need to really put in those ownership costs. So say that you um, only had a sheep enterprise. Well, then you can have all the ownership costs actually on a per head basis. And so what you can see is that your total ownership costs were $23.36. So total cost is $189.25. And so your total returns above everything. So your profit would have been $59.80 per head. So that's pretty good, um, especially if you have a thousand head. Um, so that's $60 per head that you could be making on sheep. Um, and so Again, this is 2014, so these numbers might be very much off, and I would really um, hit home again that you need to do these numbers for yourself. But I just, I think that it gives you a great template to start. And so you can see that this also is a thousand head with lambing on range, lambs sold as fat lambs, and they're fattened in a feedlot in Colorado. So that must have, been one of our partners um, that we are using kind of as a case study um, where we fattened them in a cooperative feedlot in Colorado. And so you can see that these gross revenues are different. We have fat lambs and a first batch and a second batch. And then you see that we made $272.80 in gross revenues. And then our operating costs though were a lot higher. And so the operating costs were $227.10. And so the income above operating costs or gross margin was $45.69. Well, then we take out these ownership costs and look, we're at $18.83 because we sent them to go get fattened in a feedlot in Colorado versus not fattened in a feedlot in Colorado and we were making $60 per head. 
Um, so it's just a great thing to have your enterprises broken out so you're able to tell these differences. Um, and again, I would highly recommend you don't use our numbers, you use your numbers. Uh, we do not know your operation and you guys could be getting way better sales than we have estimated. Okay, so next I'm going to show you the dairy goat budget. And so I'm sorry I have to stop sharing so much, but I think it is definitely interesting. And so we have a mixed breed goat dairy in South Central Idaho. So in Twin Falls area or the Magic Valley area. So the year is 2018. It was made between 2017 and 2018. And so we're actually doing it on milk sales, cold does, cold bucks, male kids, female kids, and what we've sold. So our total gross revenues, um, $710.50 per head. And then you have our operating costs, where you see, again, feed stuff, uh, vet, legal accounting, utilities, owner labor, hired labor. And so total operating costs, you can see, are $900. And one dollars. So net returns above operating costs negative a hundred and ninety dollars and fifty cents. So I really hope you guys aren't having this um, at your goat dairy at home. Um, but it is just something that you can start plugging away um, and really looking at what you're spending money on and making sure that you have a gross margin that's positive so you can pay other things um, like buildings and equipment, replacements, um, machinery and vehicles. So I just think it's very interesting. Uh, um, and you can see the ownership costs and um, you can see that it's a, another $136.28 per head. And so you are losing over $320 per head um, in this budget. And I really hope that's not true, but I think you guys need to do these numbers for yourself. What's also interesting is that we have this function of um, cash flows. So when am I going to be paying out? When is cash coming in? Um, and this can be very helpful when you're doing loan repayments um, because you need to know when you'll actually have cash on hand to make payments. And so you can see that there's monthly summaries of when you're going to have cash coming in and when you're going to have expenses coming out. And since there was so much money um, that was lost in operating, uh, we did have to borrow money at the end of the year, another 35,000 because we were under so much. Um, so I think that it's, a great tool to use and it is for you on the Idaho Ag Biz website. And so there's also investment summaries where we can talk about your milking parlor, milking equipment, pens, barns. And so these are the assumptions that we have again um, that you could have invested in, which definitely is going to be shown on the total enterprise budget. And so with that, I am done for today and I am willing to take questions. I know that I left a lot of things to be unsaid or I didn't say everything that I probably could have about farm management, but um, there's just a lot to talk about. And if anyone is interested in reaching out to me, I'd be happy to help you. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we don't have any questions yet. I was just going to throw out though, if anybody has um, maybe some of their own specific farm specific questions, if you want to go ahead this time around to raise, do the hand raise, um, I can open it up for you to give her some specific examples if you guys want. Um, or if you have any questions that you want to just put in the chat box, go ahead. So thank you for sharing those um, 
budget tools, I think that those could be really handy for somebody wanting to make sure that their um, finances are in order. And I know that Ashley is available to help out with, um, you know, farm specific questions outside of this webinar as well. So make sure you're reaching out to her or myself if you guys want to get more details on this. Um, so I'm not seeing any questions coming in. Yeah, so. and, and we're available to work with you as individuals as well. If you're not able to make a farm management class, um, we actually have a farm benchmarking program that allows us to work one on one with producers and actually help them come up with their own financial analysis. So if you're interested, again, please reach out to me. Um, it's a very cool grant that we received to be able to do that. So yeah, that's awesome. And if you want to shoot me the flyer when your when your management class is coming up, we can make sure to get that posted on our Facebook page. So um, thank you so much for joining us and sharing that information.